Hi, welcome back to OD YouTube channel and today we are at the 16th of December and so let's search the window of the day 16 of this Diamine Inkvent calendar for 2021. So this is the door or the window that we are going to open right now and let's see what we have here. And this one is called hmm, Vintage Copper. Interesting. It is a okay, it is a shimmer ink, so it may be wow, it has a nice shimmer color, almost an orange gold one, so this might be fun. Because I was thinking what is vintage copper? Maybe the something similar to the ancient copper of diamine but with shimmer hmm. that's what we will see so I'll be right back so I'm back to see how this shimmering vintage copper ink will perform the shimmer is there the little particles so I'm going to shake these well and then open this. Let's pick up the pipette and one, two, three drops of, of ink. Let's put this aside, close the bottle and now let's see what we have here, our Victorinox knife, and let's see how this ink will perform. Okay, it's kind of uh, reddish brown ink or a brownish red. So let's wait for this to dry and I'll be back for the rest of the review of this vintage copper. And here I am for the rest of the review of this vintage copper. So, first thing, let's look at how the swatch turned out. So, with what you have here is a orangey red, an orange red or red, red orange ink with a very strong shimmer, golden shimmer, which is nice. Now, when we look at this uh, ink, I remember immediately of the ancient copper, because it is also an ink by Diamine, with a similar name, so I had to bring this to the table. Are there similarities? Yes. There is here some sheen, there is there a little bit of sheen, but not that much. This one doesn't have shimmer, but I would say the colors on this one are of a, a cooler tone, and these are much warmer and a little lighter. So, the ink is not the same, and I would say not even the base of the ink is the same, excluding all the glitter. Then I tried to compare these with other inks also. I don't have many inks that will fall into this line. I thought I, I did, but when I look at them, well, this particular shade I don't have. I have this Red Robin from the day 14. And you can see it has some similarities with this ink. But this is more on the red side, this one is more on the orange side. I don't think you will be able to see that so well in, uh, on camera. And then I have two other inks, the Caveco Sunrise Orange, and this is clearly an orange ink if you wanted to, to be sure. And I have here the KWZ Monarch, and although it's much darker, it's really different. So. If we have to see some similarities, it would be between these three inks. The Vintage Copper that we are looking at today, the Ancient Copper 
for diamine also from the end red robin which is more on the red side so i don't have really a very good comparison for the, for this ink then i have here the chromatography and when we look at these we have a line that could predict some water resistance then we can see it's not much water resistant it has some magenta and orange when we are looking at inks with shimmer we need to be careful when we are predicting some water resistance because sometimes this line that stays behind is not really ink sometimes it's just the glitter on the paper that is much less absorbent than this kind of paper it will be it, it may disappear. Now, let's see how this ink behaved on paper, but, oops, but before, this is all a mess, I have inks and pens and little bottles all around me. Let me get the pens that I chose for the video. One of the pens I chose was this one. And what is this? This is the... It's upside down. This is the Bennu Hexagon. And because this is... It has this hexagonal shape here. So this is the Bennu Hexagon. As a real Bennu pen it has glitter, so I think it's very appropriate to have an ink like this. It has a screw cap, this transparent section, and you have the nib, which is a fine Schmidt steel nib. So this is for the finer line. For the wider line, I chose this pen. This is a pen that has kind of two names. Here it is engraved Kavec 579, but it is called Kaveco Eyedropper 1910. It is a pen that, although it's called Eyedropper, it is a, an homage to an old pen from Kavec, which was an eyedropper pen, but this one is not. It's just a regular pen cartridge converter with a medium gold nib and because these medium gold nibs cave uh, these medium cave gold nibs see, uh, usually are a little bit on the broad side i thought it would be a nice contrast with that this one has a slip cap and i'm always afraid that i push too much the cap so these were the pens that i chose so let's look at how they went on paper. So we have here three papers, as usual, the Moleskin paper, the Oxford Optic paper, and the Navigator copy paper. So let's start with the Moleskin. It is a cream colored paper. We can see that the ink is quite well behaved. You can see how it looks. It has some feathering, but Mostly, especially with the Caveco eyedropper, with the M nib, it puts down much more ink than the the Bennu hexagon. This F, this F is for the fine of the nib. This F is for the particular color scheme of the pen that I have. So, this, it, it feathers a little bit with the Caveco, not that much with the Bennu. I think the Bennu has some trouble keeping up with all this glitter and sometimes when we are starting writing it it seems it's a little bit clogged and ink doesn't come out easily but then it writes well. You can see some shading with the, the Bennu and also some shading with the Caveco. I think this is really a nice warm color. On the other side you have some bleed through, mostly with the Caveco pen. Now, if we look for some glitter, 
we can see it and if you look like let me try to catch the glitter if we look like this we can see much more glitter with the banu in the first line than on the other ones then we have here the line of the with the caveco and we can see more glitter there but also more on the first line and that makes sense the ink kind of tends to dry a little bit and so more uh, particles go on the first uh, writing part then we have here the uh, let me show you there on this kind of swatch i think you can clearly see the glitter on the oxford optic paper which is a paper that generally usually behaves very well in terms of bleed through it did have a little bit here with the caveco medium nib and you have these this look and again with the Bennu there is some glitter but not that much which is understandable it's not a very wet pen no uh, and it's not a broad nib but you can see more glitter with the caveco again more on the first line i wrote with the caveco the the color has some shading here it's very easy to see that it goes from a more orangey to a dark brown ink and then we have the navigator copy paper and in this paper i think it's always very hard to see some stuff sometimes the glitter is hard to see and i'm not seeing maybe it's me on camera but i'm not but even off camera i don't see much glitter on the venue a little bit not much but i see much more glitter with the 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 caveco there for example it also has some nice shading and i would say this is a very nice looking ink for autumn if you i i had this discussion before even with um with a viewer of the channel we are both not big fans of shading inks but in this case and because it has also the glitter i don't think that one is that bad however it shade it bleeds through a little bit here on the copy paper but that's normal now finally let's go for our rhodia dot paper where we will end the video you can see the shimmer there i have here the test for the right the drying time and around 20 seconds it is almost dry just a little smear and 25 seconds no smear at all so i think the drying time is quite good and now i'm out of focus okay here you have the water resistance so you can find there is really a very faint gray line but for example here where water was applied heavily you cannot see any longer the, that line so i don't this the water resistance is so small that i don't think the writing that you did would be visible after wet so let's just end the video with the famous phrases and let's start with the venue with the fine schmidt nib and these the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog this pen writes really well although the ink may not help sometimes and i find it to sometimes make a little hard start and this pen doesn't have problems with hard starts with regular inks and you can see there's really so i had to put my hand just to for the autofocus to work you can see really some glitter there and not that much on the second line and now let's go for the cavec with much broader line 
let me take this out, show you again the nice medium nib. Let me just clean a little bit the ink that is on top of the nib because I just want to avoid ink inside the cap. This is a nice pen made of ebonite and let's see how it works. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and this pen is amazing to write. It's a little too broad for me, but the old writing experience with these Kavec gold nibs are is amazing. Sorry, I'm just looking at the pen, so I don't do any damage to it. This slip cap uh, drives me a little crazy because I never know if I'm tightening it too much. But let's just take a look. So we can see the shimmer on the first line of the banner, also on the second, but much more on the first, I believe. And then we have the Caveco, which with a much uh, wider line, and I'm not seeing that much glitter in this time. Oh, okay, it's there. So I, I really like how darker it looks with the Caveco. So this is my video about this ink. I find this one a nice one. It shades. I'm not a very big fan of shading inks, but it has the glitter and to me an ink that reminds me of autumn. It makes sense for it to have some shading. It's like when you have the trees that are changing colors. They don't change colors every leaf at the same exact tone, usually. There are some in, some uh, trees that do that. For example, Ginkgo biloba, it is a, a tree that has that characteristic, but most of them, they don't do it. And it makes sense, so they don't have all the same kind of shading. Uh, and I know, <laughs> I'm saying this more because this is a fun thing to do, more than uh, ink to write with for a long time maybe I would get a little tired of this if it was a, a long writing session. So, this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this ink. I did. And I hope to see you again here tomorrow. Bye.